So if you analyze stocks, you most likely know of the moving average, essentially a line that represents an average of the last X days. The moving averages are relevant to us because we can pair them up to help give us buy and sell signals. When a short term moving average crosses above a long term moving average, we get a buy signal. If it crosses below, we get a sell signal. So today we're going to cut up these moving averages. And most importantly, we're going to compute where these crossovers are occurring. So in order to compute a moving average, we first need to have a set of data. Here I have closed data from Microsoft, which I am then passing into a class that represents our simple moving average. Below we have our simple moving average. Computing the simple moving average is quite simple. There's a series function called dot rolling. We give it a period and essentially it calls the mean function across that period and creates that data point for us. And the most important thing to note here is we are inheriting from a class called MA indication. So if you know moving averages, you may know that there's a lot of different kinds of them and that the simple moving average is actually only one kind of many. And so we have a moving average base class which holds everything in common. So there's more to be talked about why this moving average indication base class is important. I'll be getting to that soon. Back to the main class file where I'm instantiating a new type of object called an MA2 indication. Essentially, I'm taking two simple moving averages and passing it into this MA2 indication. So here we have our MA2 indication. Let's justify this class's existence. I'm going to bring you back to the graph. Because this MA2 indication class owns both the short term and the long term moving average, we can compute where these crossovers are occurring. So here in our initialization, we're taking in two moving averages, then storing both moving averages into a data frame. And lastly, we're computing the crossovers and storing. So a few things to mention within this method is starting with the first date of the long moving average average. It's only at this point where those two moving averages data will exist. We're then looping through and comparing each day versus the day before to see whether there has been a crossover. So the last thing to know here is that we're creating a dictionary to store the signals. Adding single cells to a data frame one by one is inefficient. We first want to create a dictionary and then map the signals onto the data frame. Before printing those crossovers, I want to bring you back to why we want to inherit from a base MA indication class. It has to do with the utility it provides using this MA2 indication class. You can see here we're taking in two MA indication. Basically, we can use any version of any moving average, whether it's simple or whole or any other type of, and this MA2 indication class will still work and still compute those very same buy and sell signals. So last, we're going to print our moving average and moving average crossovers. Here we have our short moving average starts on 2019, 515. Our long moving average starts on 627. At the bottom, we're printing our MA2 indication, which holds both the short and the long, as well as the buy and sell signal. That's essentially it for this one. Hope you learned something from it. I'm building out a project that relies heavily on indication, so I I just showing you guys how I designed. So thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.